thoughts don't have to be a problem. If you take one thought at a time, consider one thought at a time, be completely open to what a thought actually is. Not reacting to thoughts, not bouncing off of thoughts, not trying to avoid thoughts, but giving them your full attention right now. It's not a problem. And really, you'll only experience one thought at a time if you pay attention to this. What happens is we get reactive to thoughts because we think thoughts are a reality. We think thoughts are our life. We think thoughts are something that's really happening or going to happen or did happen. And then we react to that as if we're gonna change what did happen or we're going to change reality as it is. And it's even crazier to think of future thoughts and react to those. Like we're reacting to something that didn't even happen, right? This really just demonstrates the, the way we react to thoughts, the reactivity we have with thought. And this pointing is simply saying, if you just stop for a moment, open the aperture of attention in consciousness, notice what thought is, what thought is not, Thought is a cognitive experience. It's an image on a screen, so to speak. That's what it is or appears to be. It seems to be happening right now. But what it isn't is it isn't actually representing something objective. A thought about the past doesn't make the past suddenly appear here. In this way, we see there is no past, just ghosts, reflections, images on a screen. So thoughts don't represent time. Thoughts don't represent a past or a future. Thoughts don't represent actualities. You could think about somebody right now, but that thought's gonna be inaccurate. You don't actually know what that person's doing right now. You have no idea. You don't know what they're thinking. You don't know how they're moving. You don't know where they are. So the thoughts are ghosts. They're trying to create a, ra a reality that is really there to sort of stabilize you in the illusion. So strangely, we can, we can kind of get a stability out of this world of thought identification, of mind identification, um, that's really illusory. And strangely enough, there's so much agreement on this illusion <laughs> that we talk to people all the time using these symbolic uh, tools, words, concepts to solidify the illusion in ourselves and in others. We try to manipulate other people's illusion, <laughs> try to get them to see their illusion a little differently so that we can sort of benefit from that in some way that our illusion believes is real. It's completely insane, but we do it, right? Um, but all this has to do with belief, a belief that those thoughts actually represent something. The moment you really see thoroughly, they don't represent anything. You're free for that moment. The freedom is always here, but the experience of you, the one reacting to thoughts, when that subsides, when the reaction subsides and the sense of you reacting to the thoughts reacting to what you think is your life. When all of that subsides for a moment, there's just freedom. The freedom's always here. No matter how much you believe those thoughts, no matter how many thoughts are coming, no matter how sure you are that the thought that says, I can't wake up, I've tried everything for 30 years and I'm a, I'm a hopeless case. No matter how much you believe that thought, the moment you see it's a thought, there's freedom. Freedom is here all the time. The freedom is always available. Just be willing to disidentify from thoughts. Thoughts about everything. Thoughts about spirituality. Thoughts about conventional religion. Thoughts about psychology. Thoughts about therapy. Thoughts about trauma. Thoughts about everything. Thoughts about the um, uncompromising non-dual message. Those can be thoughts too. Just let them all go. And see, feel, hear what is right here without conceptualizing. Because if you conceptualize, you'll turn it into something that it's not. You'll make it into a thing, a world, a story, a spiritual concept. You'll turn it into awareness, whatever that is. 
turn it into <laughs> consciousness, t turn it into anything, right? Um, don't turn it into anything. Just open the channel of curiosity, inquiry, which is also the channel of mystery. And just keep the channel open. Don't solidify. Don't try to land somewhere. Don't try to find the foundation that you don't need. Just fly. Don't try to be somewhere specific. Don't try to know something about the world or yourself. <laughs> Seems like we really want that, doesn't it? <laughs> but the unknowing, the not, not knowing in the way we're talking, we're talking conceptual knowing, um, is freedom. It's what you really want. I promise. It's also what you're afraid of. I promise that too. But the fear is conditional. The freedom is unconditional. Always available. The fear will come and go, and then it will go. And it's always welcome. It can come anytime it wants, but it will stop being a problem for you. And the freedom will clarify. It will become deeper, more profound. And every thought is allowed. Any thought could appear right now. It could say, I don't understand this. This is crazy talk. I get a lot of comments on my videos. What you're saying sounds like crazy talk. Or you're insane. You should be locked up. You're on drugs. Like I get those kinds of comments periodically on shorts mostly. People who aren't familiar with this material. Um, and that's fine. Like I can see how the mind would say that. Of course a thought's going to say that. Because thoughts have this weird arrogance like they know what's going on. I could say the ego, but the ego is like overselling it. It's really just thoughts, right? One thought, one thought, one thought, another thought. But they're rather stereotyped. If you look at what thoughts talk about or what their content is, they have such a stereotyped um, pattern of concerns and beliefs and so forth. But there's a definite arrogance to it. The arrogance is, oh, I know how this script goes. I know how this mass of delusion goes that we share amongst one another what it means to be human what it means to be whatever all the things just, you know, what it means to be successful what it means to be a good person what it means to be a spiritual person what spirituality is all, all of it nonsense but we can have such an arrogance when we're mind identified about knowing that it's like I don't know, being proud of being the drunkest one at the party or something. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good analogy, but um, but there's a bizarre confidence that can arise from that, of like how much delusion we believe in and identify with and conveniently go a little bit unconscious. You have to go unconscious to do all this because part of you knows for sure every single person walking the face of the earth knows this truth. But there's a fear barrier, a big one. And the bigger the fear barrier, the more layers of identity there are to prevent you from actually feeling the fear. So there you go. But all of that, everything I just said, these are just conditions based. These are just momentary appearances in the infinite cosmic soup and the nothingness that is its essence. Hmm. The light and the darkness interpenetrating until there's only this luminous emptiness, luminous radiant emptiness. That's here always. It's freedom always. It's endlessly and spontaneously, effortlessly accommodating always. This is your birthright. It's available always. It may sound like I'm talking about some kind of advanced spiritual realization or something. And there is a depth to realization where this becomes very obvious. But again, as I began this talk, you start with one thought. What is the thought right now? Go there. That's your answer. It's as close as you can possibly imagine. What is the thought? The thought that says, I get this. I understand. The thought that says, oh my God, I can't think about this right now. I have to cook dinner. I don't know. The thought that says, but I have so much shame in me, I can't do this. Like, you know, I'm not ready for this. Like, 
what thought are you believing? It's fine. Go to the thought. Go to the thought. I'm not ready for this. I don't have the capacity for this. This works for you, but not for me. If that's the thought, great. Go to the thought. Where else are you going to go? So there you are, experiencing one thought that says whatever it says. I don't have what it takes to wake up. Okay, that's the thought. What is it pointing to? Do you think it's pointing to you? Where is that? Where's the you that it's pointing to? Find it. Do you think it's pointing to some objective reality, some objective truth? Great, find the truth, where is it? Can you point to it? <laughs> so really, there's just that thought. And when there's just the thought, what do you have to do? What is there to do? Stop right there. Stop. I don't want to give it a label, but I'm going to say that's consciousness because... Consciousness, the, the way I'm using the term, is really just a, a recognition of the fact that we were misperceiving the nature of a thought. It's an undoing. It's an unbinding from thought, from belief. But a whole lot goes into the binding. Thoughts are simple, really, if you look at them singularly. It doesn't matter what they say. They say, I'm the worst person in the world. Does that thought have charge? I'm the best person in the world. Does that thought have charge? Do those thoughts feel different somehow? For me, they don't. Not at all. They're all just words, symbols. Like when you're a kid and you're in whenever, kindergarten or first grade or whatever it is and you're learning your letters, preschool, I guess. You're learning your letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're learning symbols. Is Z better than A? Is one better than seven? They're just symbols, right? And words are symbols. But at some point, we build those words into concepts. And most importantly, we learn or start to believe those concepts are about me. And then there's something to defend. Once there's something to defend, there's there's a sort of pushing and pulling that happens with the concepts, with the thoughts. And um, that leads to this whole world of mind identification I'm talking about. But you can stop doing that. You can stop pushing and pulling on thoughts. You can see that it doesn't matter what the heck the, th the content of the thought is. You can say, I'm a great person, I'm a bad person, I'm a hopeless case, I'm smart, I'm dumb, I'm weak, I'm strong. Until I stop smoking, I'll never wake up. It doesn't matter what those thoughts say. The question is, do you believe them? Do you believe they point to something objective? The reason I do this, the reason I list these thoughts this way, is so you can just in real time notice like, oh yeah, I could, I could have any of those thoughts in my head. Did anything change? You're just sitting there, right? Listening to this, whatever you're doing. Is anything really changing around you as these thoughts are considered? Not a damn thing. There may be a reaction to some of them, but that's a physical sensation, maybe an emotion. But is anything in your environment actually changing? Are you, are you suddenly appearing in the past or in the future? Or, no. If you are, that's great realize that's a thought like if you're suddenly like thinking about the oh i remember when i was a kid and now you're imagining some visual experience great that's the next thought so stop there stop with that thought oh there's a visual image me riding my bike you know and then the clown chasing me or whatever whatever your you know triggering childhood thing is and i don't mean to belittle it because some of them are very triggering and traumatic right horrible things have happened to us but even that even that, when the reactivity, and the problem with trauma is there's a lot of reactivity and there's a lot of ways to approach that. But even that, when that, once the trauma subsides, even those most fearful thoughts can become uncharged, truly. You'll realize it's literally just another thought because no matter what you're thinking about, past, present, or future, you still haven't moved from here. You've simply had fluctuations in consciousness that look like images and sounds and words and narratives, and you've had physical sensations that move through the body, maybe in reaction to those. And this is why I say, the more you do emotion work, the shadow work, the more you realize you have tremendous capacity for experience in the body, in the sense fields, especially when they're non-dualistic. There's an infinite container for sensation and experience. And it can get very intense at times. You may have like massive Kundalini that's not related to anything you know about. It may not be trauma related. It may just be like 
intense energy is moving through. But when you realize the vessel is infinite, essentially, then really, what what's the problem? There's there's physical experience. There's, you know, thoughts rearranging themselves, coming and going that are essentially innocuous unless you react to them. And if you react to them, you can recognize, oh, this is a reaction that may shoot me into another thought. And then that's the thought. And you can be okay with that thought too, if you stop there. The next thought that says, I can't handle this, right? Stop there, oh, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. What if I said, I can handle this? If I said, Joe can handle this, Joe can't handle this. Like, what does it matter? These are just thoughts, right? Again, content of the thought doesn't matter. It's, it's, the, it's recognizing the nature of thought itself is right here, not pointing to anything outside of here because there is nothing outside of here. And you, you can handle experiencing one thought. And you can handle experiencing the sensations that are associated with it. And the more you do that, the more you'll see a thought as a thought, a sensation as a sensation. The more you'll wake up, the more reality will be experienced directly as non-dual luminous experience. And the thoughts won't be a problem and the emotions won't be a problem, and the sensations won't be a problem. Can it actually be that simple? Yes. I know many people who have realized all of this. Realized meaning directly experienced, not understood. And this isn't about understanding, it's about direct experience. It's about exploration. So do the exploration, here you are. If you have trauma, find the gratitude that you have that trauma to go directly at that experience, into the experience and learn something. Learn something about unbinding. Learn something about healing. Learn something about direct experience. Learn something about your own capacity. Yeah? You may not be able to be great, grateful for all of the things that have happened to you in your life and so forth right away, but consider the possibility that you actually can become grateful for the fact that there's something here to experience, to be brought into consciousness, to be brought into immediate experience that essentially I can learn from. And what you're gonna learn if you continue to do this with an open mind, open heart, open energetics, open body, open your body up. Sometimes people get so contracted, you know, and I'm talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. I say, open up, open your body, you know, take a deep breath, open, 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 open. Yeah. So physically open. The more you do it with these open aspects, these open um, orientations, uh, the more you'll realize like, yes, you have tremendous capacity for all of it and you, you're okay. You're, you're deeply okay, yeah. So we've touched on a lot of different areas here. Trauma, uh, suffering, emotion, direct experience, um, deep realization, shunyata. Uh, but again, it all starts with investigation of a thought, I think, it did for me. Learn the nature of thought directly, become curious, notice Man, if you could do one thing, and that's stop reacting to thoughts and question your belief in any given thought, any given thought, especially the ones that you push away and you're terrified of, bring them in, bring them into focus. Oh, what's that thought that I'm so scared of? That's the one that's, that, that you, could, you can set up a polarity with one single thought. One version of this is PTSD, but it can happen with other kinds of thoughts. I've seen this. You can set up a polarity with one specific thought you're so afraid to think, you're so afraid to see, feel, directly come into contact with because you believe it's real. You, you believe it represents something about you. It all comes back to identity. Um, that you cannot even notice you're doing this. But if you take up this practice I'm talking about and just be open to like, what is the thought? What is the linchpin here with all of that seems to be holding this tension together? Like become curious, become explore, uh, explorative. Anyway, however that works. Um, become adventurous. Your your own experience is right here for you all the time, all levels of it. There's nothing in your experience that's going to be um, eternally problematic or something. There's nothing in your experience that's going to just destroy you by coming into contact with. If you're already in, because you're already in contact with it. It's just there's there's a there's a polar, polarized experience. There's a polarized arrangement with that contact. That's all that we're exploring here. So, yeah, we will just start with one thought and, and and bring it into consciousness. Whatever that one thought is right now, could be like this is all so complicated. I don't get it. Okay, bring it in. It's all so complicated. I don't get it. Stop right there. Touch it. What is that thought made out of? It's like if you look out the airplane window and you see a bunch of clouds that look like certain formations. What are those made out of? 
almost as if you could just go right to them. Well, the same with thoughts. You can go right to it. You can hold it right there in your consciousness. Don't run from it. Don't react to it. It's what you don't do that matters. Don't run. Don't react. Papaji sometimes would just say, stop. Don't start a thought. Don't move. And you can do that with one thought. But always be open to the fact that you may be starting to react to the next thought without realizing it. Because that's how this works. And then be open to that thought. Yeah? Try it. See how it goes for you.